Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. This time, I am so pleased and honored to have my guest discussant. My friend, a great math teacher, Mom Arlene D. Lombrero, to discuss about special parallelograms. Hi, good morning. Once again, I am your Mathematics 9 teacher, Arlene T. Lobredo. Our topic for today is about rectangle, rhombus, and square. Let me cite to you first the objectives. First, prove a theorem on special parallelogram. Second, apply theorem on special parallelogram. Lastly, value accumulated knowledge as means of new understanding. Let's have a review. Solving angles, sides, and diagonals of parallelogram. So that's our previous topic. So to solve for the unknown angles involving parallelogram, we need to be guided by the different properties of a parallelogram. So for us to solve it, we have to apply what we've learned with the properties of parallelogram. So these are the different properties of parallelogram that will guide you in solving the angles. The first one in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent, that is for the angles. In a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. The diagonals of a parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So special parallelogram, these are the um, rectangle, rhombus, square. So they are special since all the properties of a parallelogram are present in square, rhombus, and rectangle. So as you can see here in a rectangle, as you observe, there are four right angles. Apart from that, the same thing with the parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. But we will discuss further than that later. Here in rhombus, it's the same thing. Um, as you can see, opposite angles are congruent, but at this, at this time, all sides, I mean, each side have the same measure. Next is square. So as we know that square have four equal sides. And apart from that, each angle has 90 degrees or right angles. Theorem number three. So the diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So we have here rhombus of friend. And the diagonals of it that forms another point, which is point D. We have a given that the parallelogram friend is a rhombus. Prove that line segment FE is perpendicular to line segment RN. For us to do so, let's have the statement and reason. So let's put here the given. So the first one, of course, it's always the given one. The parallelogram friend is a rhombus. Of course, we come up to that because that is the given. Next is the line segment FR. So we will look for the line segment FR. It's congruent with the line segment RE. How do we come up to that? That is the definition of a rhombus because they do have the same I mean, equal sides. Next to that is a line segment FE and line segment RN bisect each other. We, we get that from the properties of parallelogram. So the reason for that is that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Next to that, connect it now to the point D. D is a midpoint of line segment FE. 
okay? And then we, we, we come up to that because of the line segment F, we bisect the line segment Rn at D. Number five, of line segment FD is congruent with the line segment DE because of the definition of the midpoint. And then a line segment RD is congruent to the line segment DN. That is a reflexive property. It's DN, okay? That is for the reflexive property. And then for the number seven, the triangle FDR, triangle FDR is congruent to triangle EDR. We come up to that because of the SSS congruent postulates. So you know what is the SSS? That is the side, side, side congruence postulate. It applies to the triangles. We will discuss that in our um, next, uh, next topic after the quadrilaterals. You will learn more about that. Number eight is the angle FDR is congruent to angle EDR. We come up to that because of the CPCPC, which is the corresponding parts of congruent. Triangles are congruent. Number nine, the angle FDR and the angle EDR are right angles. So those are from the definition of a linear pair. Next to that, lastly, the line segment FE is perpendicular to the line segment RN because of the perpendicular lines meet to form right angles. So that's how you do the statement and reason for the rhombus. Let's have now an example for the theorem number three. So we have here rhombus friend to the midpoint D. So if line segment Rn is equal to 20 centimeters, find a line segment and D. So Rn, that is our line segment Rn that measures 20 centimeters. We have to find the value of ND. So we have only one given, 20 centimeters, and we have to get for the line segment ND. And we know that for us to get it, we have to apply the property of parallelogram. So it's easy. So line segment Rn is equal to the line segment. Is equal to the line segment ND. Plus the line segment DR. So if you're going to add the line segment ND plus the line segment DR, that is equal to the line segment RN. Next to that is we will apply the substitution. So we have to substitute the value of line segment Rn, which is 20 centimeters. And then let line segment ND and the line segment dr. Let's um, set the line segment ND as a value of x, and then the line segment dr is another value of x. So since they are equal, we can set that here as x plus x. Okay, so therefore, we have to simplify further x plus x that gives us 2x. And then for us to solve for the value of x, let's divide both sides by 2. So 20 divided by 2, that gives us 10 centimeters, and then that is for the value of x. Now that we have the value of x, our main goal is to get the, val the value of line segment ND. And since the line segment ND stands for the value of x, 
Therefore, we can say that the line segment ND is equal to 10 centimeters. Now let's have number two. If the measure of angle NDE is equal to x squared plus 65 degrees, find the x. So where is the NDE? So that is our ND. Okay, and that measure is x plus I mean x squared plus 65 degrees. So we have to get the value of x. So for us to find the value of, of x, let's apply the properties of parallelogram. So the measure of angle NDE is equal to 90 degrees. As we've known from the um, theorem number three. So we have it 90 degrees and then after that um, substitute the value. So the measure of angle NDE as a given is x squared plus 65 is equal to 90 degrees and then after that combine like terms or do the subtraction property of equality or what we know transposing the value on the other side. So that will become 6 squared is equal to 90 minus 65. Then simplify it further. We have 90 minus 65 that gives us 25. And then the, our main goal is to get the value of x, not x squared. So we discussed about solving um, radical, equa radical equations so or loss exponents. So we will apply what we've learned to that. So for us to get the value of x, we will apply radical sign on both sides. Okay, so simplifying it further, the square root of x squared is equal to x. And the square root of that is x. So therefore, the square root of 25 is equal to positive negative 5. That is the value of x. Now let's proceed with the theorem number four. Each diagonal of a rhombus bisects opposite angles. So we have here the rhombus friend, when we have here the given um, given angle. So we have angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. The given is a um, parallelogram friend is a rhombus by proving that we have um, to prove that. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. So for us to get it, let's have here our given, and then let's write our statement on reason. So of course, first one is always the given. So we have here parallelogram friend is a rhombus. We come up to that because that is a given. Next to that is a line segment FN is congruent to line segment FR. And then the same thing as line segment RE is congruent to line segment EN because that is a definition of a rhombus. All sides are equal. Next to that is line segment RN. R con I mean, is congruent to line segment Rn. So that is a reflexive property. It's just, they're just the same. Next to that is number four. Since they are the same, we can say that the triangle NFR is congruent to triangle REN. By doing the SSS congruent postulate. Then again, I'll be discussing that further after the topic of a quadrilateral. So once we're done with that, we will, the next topic that we have are similarities. Lastly, since those, I mean, triangle NFR is congruent to triangle REN, we can say that the angle one is congruent to angle two and then angle three is congruent to angle four by 
doing the CPCTC, which is the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles or congruent. Now let's have an example for it. We have here rhombus friend. We have um, all of the angles that we have to look for. If the measure of angle one is 33 degrees, so find the measure of the following. I'm sorry. Find the measure of the other numbered angles. So we have there the given thing. So we have one given angle, which is 33 degrees for the angle one. So let's put it in our Let's remove that angle one and replace it as a given, which is 33 degrees. Okay, let's put it there. Next, we have to solve for the angle two. How did we come up to 33 as the answer? As what we have learned from the rhombus, that um, they are congruent. Okay. Next to that is the measure of angle 4, which is 30 de 33 degrees, since they are opposite, opposite angles are congruent. So let's put it as 33 degrees. Next to that, since it's opposite as well of the 33, then that is also 33 degrees. Next to that is the measure of angle 5. Angle 5, as we know, it forms are perpendicular. So definitely that measures 90 degrees. Okay, now, having say so, we have here the given 33 degrees, 90 degrees, and what's missing is we have to get the value of the measure of the angle N. So, since that is a triangle, that should form as a 180 degrees in total. So 180 degrees minus 90 minus um, 33. That's how you do it. So definitely. That comes up with 57 degrees. So we have already the value or the measure of angle 9, which is 57 degrees. And then apply the properties of a rhombus that we just learned a while ago. So therefore, the measure of angle 8, angle 7, and angle 6 are all the same. They are 57 degrees.